Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Lutheran Church. I'm Jim Kent, the pastor here. This, uh, we have our worship this morning. We are continuing our look at James and how our faith-filled good works and words flow into the world to bring Jesus uh, light and uh, love into that world. And so I invite you now to rise and face the cross at the back of the church as we begin our worship this morning. We begin our worship remembering that we are baptized children of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, 
Save and comfort us, O gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. This, this is the feast of glory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose strength has made us perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith that we may please you in both will and deed. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for our first lesson. The first reading is from James chapters three and four from 13 through chapter four, verse 10. Who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the gospel. Alleluia. If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and a servant of all. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you. And they went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he is killed after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all 
and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, let us now confess our faith in the one true God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Recipe cards. For many of us, these are precious gifts that we receive from those older than us, maybe grandma or our moms or somebody. to, And they're used to help us make those favorite family dishes with those often secret family recipes. Well, for my family, it's my mom's sour cream coffee cake recipe and Shauna's mom's custard pumpkin pie recipe. Now, Shauna and I can try to remember all the ingredients and the order and manner of putting them together and the temperatures and times to cook the meal. These things matter if we want to get close to the real thing. And it helps if we can go to the source, if we can go to the actual recipe card written out by the one who started it all. Well, for the past couple of weeks, we've been reading through James' letter to his early church. And it's also written to us today. James urges us to be God's hands and feet, his eyes, his ears, his lips, in the church, and out there in the world by being doers of the word and not hearers only. He gives us recipes, in a way, for being doers of the word through our faith-filled works and deeds that flow out into the world. Faith-filled works and deeds that cause the light of Christ to illuminate and the love of Christ to be shown. A love which quenches those fires of hate-filled incendiary speech that we heard so much about last week. God desires our faith-filled works and words to become a harvest of righteousness that's sown in peace by those who make peace. And today we hear in James' letter a couple of different recipes for peace. Peace. 
When I say this word, what comes to mind for you? Webster's Dictionary defines peace as freedom from disturbance or a state of security and order in the world. This is the world's recipe card for peace. And it sounds nice. This absence of conflict, though, pales in comparison to shalom, the ancient Hebrew word for peace, that is God's recipe for peace. Shalom is a complete, intact unity through absolute trust in the creator. When God created the heavens and the earth, creation was completely immersed in this shalom, this peace of God, just as God intended. The world's recipe for peace, that absence of conflict sounds nice, but it's missing some key elements, some necessary ingredients. While there may be that lack of conflict for a moment, the seeds of conflict often remain right below the surface, waiting for just the right moment to sprout up and begin growing once again. Meanwhile, God's recipe for peace, shalom, these seeds are removed forever. James asks you and me today through a series of questions in our letter, which recipe card are you holding? The world's recipe card or God's? Both the world and the church in James's day were holding the world's recipe for peace. My guess is that many of us here in the church today myself included, have a similar recipe card in our hands. Why do I think that? Well, I look at my own life, and I hear a little bit about some of your lives. And if you doubt me, listen to the questions that James asks us in our epistle today. They are questions for the children of God for you and me, the people who make up the church. And if we answer these questions honestly, you'll know which card you're holding. Do you have quarrels and fights in your life? Are many of your desires continually unfulfilled? Does it seem from your point of view, that your prayers aren't being answered. If and when you answer yes to any of these questions, James tells us the reason why. Our focus is off. We're following the wrong recipe for peace. God's word calls us his church. He calls us the bride of Christ. Yet too often, we turn away from our groom and go after the wisdom of the world. As we are an adulterous people when it comes to loving God and returning the love that he has shown to us. In turning away from his wisdom and grabbing on to the world's, we have replaced God's recipe for peace with our own. We have taken ingredients out that we don't care for. We have added ingredients to suit our own taste. We don't want to make waves or cause a big commotion in the world around us so we let deviations from God's word slide in order to avoid those conflicts. 
to keep the world's version of peace, yet still sowing seeds of quarreling, fighting, covetousness, and desire to sprout later. Following the world's wisdom, we have fashioned our own recipe for discord, division, and disaster. But no matter how adulterous toward God we might be, as we seek out and follow our own recipe for disaster, God desires nothing more than for us to return to him. That we might actually be at shalom with him once again. God's recipe to restore his shalom between us and him and between those around us was to send his son, the prince of peace, into the world. Jesus revealed how his father would restore that shalom in our gospel today, saying to his disciples, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. And to Jesus' disciples, people who had been following him for quite some time, this recipe made absolutely no sense. To them, greatness was the way to achieve peace. But Jesus reminds us all of the difference between the world's wisdom and God's wisdom, saying to his disciples, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And Jesus followed this formula to the letter. He was betrayed into the hands of men. He was crucified, just as he said. And on that cross, Jesus suffered and died as he submitted to his father's will, humbly subjecting himself to that most gruesome of all deaths. He perfectly executed his father's plan to restore peace between him and man. And rising from the dead, he defeated death's power over us, freeing us from sin and eternal death and the conflict that it causes. To all who believe in Jesus, his faith-filled works and his word, James tells us that our Father gives more grace. Therefore, it says, May it, God opposes the proud, but gives his grace to the humble. In faith, we cling to God's perfect wisdom and the peace found there in his word. His recipe for peace. James goes to the cupboard of God's word to pull together this recipe that allows us to be a harvest of righteousness that is sown in peace by those who make peace. This recipe for God's peace, God's shalom, is as follows. First, James tells us to humbly submit to God in all things. We believe that we are accountable to him accountable to his word, all of it. God tells us through his prophet Moses that everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. There's nothing to add, nothing to change, nothing to delete. Everything we need for that true peace is right here. It's all there. Every ingredient, every step. Second, armed with God's word, James tells us to resist the devil, 
the ultimate source of evil. Paul tells us in Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And so as we spend time in God's word and in prayer, the devil flees from us. Third and fourth, James tells us to, as we come near to God, knowing his love and his promises for us, he will draw near to us. God tells us throughout his word, thus declares the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you. We come near to God by repenting and confessing our sins for those times that we have rejected his wisdom for the wisdom of the world. And he comes near to us as he gives us his grace, mercy, and love through forgiveness of all of our sins. Fifth, the Holy Spirit causes all of us to begin then to single-mindedly serve God, doing what he created us to do. After all, we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. God cleanses our hands to be his hands wherever he places us within his creation. God purifies our hearts, enabling us to begin to think as he thinks. No more double-mindedness. Our whole life, from Sunday to Saturday, week in, week out, month in and month out, year in and year out, becomes a life focused on God's will and God's will alone. And sixth, as our focus changes from that double-minded focus of sometimes God, sometimes the world, our eyes and ears are opened. Like Jesus' eyes and ears, as he mourned for Jerusalem, than the days before his crucifixion, we too begin to grieve the rampant sin we see in the world around us. We start mourning for all of those who are dying in their ignorance of God's promises, separated for eternity from him and us. And as we see, as we grieve, as we mourn, our prayers begin to actually align with God's desires. We pray the Lord's Prayer as Jesus intended. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask and we receive. And led by God, we are moved to the faith-filled works and words that make true peace, shalom, between God and his creation. And finally, humbling ourselves before the Lord, we recognize that we deserve no pride-filled rewards, only God's merciful grace. And we believe Jesus' promise to us in Luke. The one who humbles himself shall be exalted. As we patiently await Jesus' promised return, we faithfully follow God's recipe for shalom, true peace. And one day, he will lift us all up into his eternal presence a place where we shall experience for all eternity, shalom, true peace, just as God intended.
And now may this peace, this shalom, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard God's word, I now uh, ask if anyone has any prayer needs that they would like brought up during worship. You can just uh, raise your hand and shout out your request if you have anything. Christy. Okay, so pray for healing for Scott. Okay, thank you. All right. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we pray for all believers, especially those that are persecuted, that we are able to worship you without reprisal, freely speaking the truth. Bless all preachers of the word and our pastor Jim, that they would shepherd this flock. We lift up Linda and Sarah Benzer after the passing of Al, that their mourning be assuaged in the knowledge that God has called him home. We pray for Frank Bell and his family after the passing of Diana, that they are comforted in the knowledge that God has taken care of her. For Al and Diana, we know that God has said, well, well done, good and faithful servants. Come and see the place I have prepared for you. Father, we pray for this nation, that we would put away detestable practices, turning back to the truth of your created world and the love you freely give us, give to all who ask. What are we to do with the malcontents that desire and do not have so they murder? What of those that covet and cannot attain so they quarrel? What of those that do not have because they do not ask? Use your people to heal the suffering, the free exercise of the gospel in word and in action that our example will be considered when the eyes of the world are distant and the innermost thoughts consume. Great physician, we commend all who are sick or suffering into your healing hands. We pray for Ray and those with cancer, that they be comforted in treatment and have hope that they will be cured. We lift up those recovering from surgery, especially Pastor Paul and Dorothy, as well as those in physical therapy, that they will regain their health. Bless the poor, the homeless, and the lonely, according to your good and perfect will, as well as Scott for healing and those we now name in our hearts. Author of power, we pray for the members of our military that they be kept safe. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Having heard God's word, we worship him in different ways. And one of those ways is through our tithes and offerings, giving back a portion of what he has given to us. And so as we thank God for all that he has given to us, you may leave those offerings in any of the offering plates around the sanctuary if you brought them this morning. You can also make your offerings online uh, or through the mail. Uh, in all these ways, God gives thanks and praise to you for what you have given him. Let us now give thanks to God in our words. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now. In the presence of all his people. In the presence of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. 
And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and await the usher's direction for distribution.
Please rise. And now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I would uh, invite the, any of the Sunday school teachers that are with us today to come forward for a short blessing. We began Sunday school a few weeks ago, and uh, we are thankful to uh, all of the, the men and women you see on the screen and those who are here with us today for uh, giving of their time to share the word of God with uh, our little ones and our young people and our teenagers. And so uh, we, we pray for you now. Let us pray. O Lord, grant to these your people the gifts of wisdom and discretion, kindness and faithfulness, so that they may effectively teach and guide and grant all your people a ready willingness to learn. Let the knowledge of your word be preserved and extended among us so that all may know and praise you now and forever. Lord, we ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. My brothers and sisters, go now in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is never in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you so much for your help, your assistance. As God's children, we are invited to pray with each other and for each other. And uh, so uh, if you have any prayer needs that uh, were not verbalized during the worship service today, please let us know what those needs might be as you uh, see myself, Deacon Neil, we, uh, be privileged to pray with and for you um, in your needs. And let us know how those needs are going um, in your life so we can see and others can see how God is work at work uh, through our prayers. And as we go into the world, we have a variety of ways that we are also invited to participate in God's mission, to joyfully proclaim his word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Um, as always, it is that privilege to pray, and we have a circle of prayer warriors that we pray with and that pray for you. And so if you'd like to join this uh, circle, uh, please let me know. Uh, let the church office know. We'd be more than happy to add you to the distribution list for those uh, prayer needs. Our food pantry is uh, being uh, used quite a bit now um, because of some of the changes in um, in. Uh, social uh, care things out there in the world. Um, we have a lot more people coming to our door and we are in need of canned tomato products, canned meat products, uh, I believe syrup and spaghetti sauce and crackers are the things that we're kind of lacking to round out those, uh, those get bags that we provide to people. And uh, finally, today is youth group. It is the third Sunday of the month, I believe. And uh, that would make it a youth group day. And so please, if you are a, uh, middle schooler or high schooler, uh, please join us for a youth group today at, uh, over here at church. As we go out into the world in all these different things that we do in service to God and his people, we go with the blessing of the Lord. And so now receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please join me now in singing our closing hymn, Lord, take my hand and lead me.
As we leave, let us joyfully proclaim God's word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen.